Okay, good morning everybody. Um, it's a beautiful sunny morning here in Asheville. And I've got enough bricks collected here for my next project. I don't want to keep you in suspense any longer. Uh, today we're going to be building a rocket stove. And that's so we can have a place to cook out here at our new campsite with our new tent platform. Now I built, I built a little three quarters box, wooden box, um, to hold this soil to raise the stove up a little bit. Um, you don't need to have a bed of soil like this. You could just build your rocket stove right on the ground. It'll be fine. The, um, it's not going to cause a problem right on the ground. But I'm going to have this bed of soil and I'm going to make a base level with these bricks. I'm going to line this, most of this area with bricks because I want to get this up as high as I can so that I can cook while I'm seat, sitting down in a chair right here, a, a camping chair. So I'm going to just lay out a pattern for um, the base. I've actually took a picture of it on my phone. So I'm going to pull up that photo right now and quickly lay out the base. I already did it last night, but I'm going to do it again here. <laughs> but it's level enough for our purposes. All right, there it is. There it is, there's my base. Next, I'm gonna um, create some half stones because I'm gonna need a few of them. I'm gonna score some of these bricks uh, across the, at the half point and I'm gonna hit them with my hammer and break them in half. I gotta go get my cold chisel to do that. I'll be right back. Okay, I can't find my cold chisel, so I'm just going to use this um, cat's paw or maybe the screwdriver. These bricks are exactly 8 inches long, so I'm going to score them <coughs> at 4 inches with my... I'm going to start with my screwdriver and see if that's good enough. No, I don't think so. Let's do it with the cat's paw. I'm going to do both sides of this at four inches so that I hopefully get a nice clean break. And there it is. I didn't even have to tap it with the hammer. It just broke nice and clean um, just by hitting it with the cat's paw. You score it on both sides like that, sometimes you'll get a clean break without having to hammer it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with these other bricks and I'm going to use those to uh, start building the, um, the rocket stove. Another way to score bricks is just to make one mark at your halfway point. You can make it with your screwdriver. So there's four inches. And then you can just use the straight claw of your hammer to tap it across like that. You just got to have a good steady hand to do it that way. Sometimes that'll work to score a, a brick if you're nice and steady also. And then the other side at four inches.
just mark a guide mark with your screwdriver and then just start tapping and you got a fairly clean break right there at four inches all right so there's some more of our half bricks we'll do a couple more of those there's more oranges let's try to make all together And there it is. Pretty clean break. We'll put those jagged edges on the outside. So now we're going to go ahead and start building the rocket stove. Now we're going to use it. We're going to do a double chamber rocket stove today. Um, a lot of the rocket stoves I see on YouTube are done with uh, single chamber. The one chamber acts as the um, then for the oxygen to come in and also it acts as a place to feed the wood into the rocket stove. But we're going to do a dual chamber. And to do that, this side on the left is going to be left open for our air to come in. And again, because we're using bricks that are only half thickness, we're going to do this, uh, we're going to make this a double height for this air to come in with this draft over here. Now you want to stagger your stones, as you can see I'm doing here, so that they're not just stacked up straight on top of each other. You're staggering your joints. Definitely don't want to use that one. It's got a bunch of tar stuck to the bottom. There we go. That one's pretty clean. That one's not. And now there's our double opening for our air to come in. Right there. Now we're going to create another opening right here in the front where we're going to feed our wood in. layer of the double opening. This one's got a bunch of tar stuck to the bottom of it, so we're not going to use that after all. the second uh, double layer of our front opening for our wood to feed in. So this opening over here on the left is for air to come in to feed the to fuel the fire and then this opening is for the wood to come in also the fuel for the fire. So wood is not the only fuel for a fire. You have to have oxygen as well. If you have a airtight room and a fire starts and there's no air coming in, the fire won't uh, grow and eventually it'll go out as it uses up all the oxygen in your room. All right, so there's a double opening. Now, another factor about rocket stoves is you want to have them high enough so that the uh, combustion in the chamber, in the burning chamber, creates a draft or a draw to draw oxygen into the flame to feed it. And this is where the draw starts and it comes up the chamber. This is going to be about 20 inches high minimum for that 18, 20 inches high for that draw to be effective and to be able to draw oxygen into the chamber. So we're just going to keep going. Building up our layers. And again, we're staggering our bricks so that we're um, 
covering up our joints and our bricks. We're not just piling on, on top of each other. We're staggering our joints with our bricks. So um, one other thing you might notice, if this is a um, mortarless construction, we're using no concrete mortar for this project. And that's because it doesn't need it. The weight of the bricks holds them in place. And the uh, amount of air that sneaks in through these cracks is not only uh, not really that big of a deal, not a lot of air sneaking in, but it also helps the, uh, air, the air sneaking in those cracks helps to fuel the fire. So it's okay to have cracks in the sides of our stove. Now that's pretty solid and our height turned out to be uh, 15 and a half inches which I we're going to try out to see if that's enough. In the meantime we're going to go get our uh, little pile of sticks. You don't need wood to um, fire this stove up. All you need is some sticks. You don't need big wooden logs. Now this brick right here is also going to come in. Let's choose this one. This is going to be our um, cover for our air vent. So after the fire gets going a little bit, we're going to slow it down by covering this air vent over here with this side sliding brick right here. Now you can put one of those metal stove burners on top of here to cook on, but we don't happen to have one. So we're just going to put two additional bricks up here. Okay, we've got a rocket stove built and I've leveled it a little bit and uh, got our matches and our paper and our sticks accumulated. So again, this is the fire chamber where all the sticks go in. We're going to put those in first and they're just going to lay across the um, chamber until they're touching the back of the brick wall back there. And then this chamber over here, which is the the flue, it's sort of like the same as a flue on a fireplace or on a wood stove. That's going to um, be our airflow, and we're going to light it from that side as well. So here goes all these little sticks going in. And I've got some really good combustible material that's hopefully going to get this going quickly. I'm going to put uh, some combustible material down the top of the chamber. But for now, I'm just loading this up with as many sticks as, as I can fit in here. Little tiny ones and also some mid-sized sticks. Oh, we've got an interesting red spider crawling on the side of the bricks. Maybe he was living there in the brick pile. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that little red spider right there. Maybe we could do a zoom in on him. Let's see if we can pick him up on the zoom. Right there. Never seen a red spider before. Not all red. I've seen spiders with red spots on them. But it's kind of weird to see an all red spider. All right, we're going to relocate him so he doesn't get burned up in the uh, in, on ensuing fire. Let's actually relocate him first before he gets uh, in any trouble. Okay, he's grabbing on tight, so blowing on him didn't work. Gonna have to get him to crawl on this piece of cardboard. And 
there he goes. Off into the bushes. All right, back to work. Now we're continuing to feed the uh, chamber with sticks. I hope we're still filming. I'll check in a minute. Not sure if we're still filming. This card might be full. All right, now I'm going to go get my combustible material. Yeah, we're still filming. I got my bag of combustible material here. This is a bag of white sage from the desert out in um, New Mexico that I collected about 15 years ago. And I've been just carrying it around ever since, uh, waiting for a good opportunity to uh, use it. I do smudge with it once in a while. I do use small amounts to smudge with. And this is what's left of the bag. Super dry, super combustible. And this, I think it's gonna go up like tinder when we light this from down below. All right, ready to light. Got my matches. We're gonna light from the flue chamber over here on the side. So we're sliding our little flue thing out of the way. Got our <coughs> matches from um, Guatemala. Courtesy of a friend who's visiting, Fogata Fosforos de Suguridad. Suguridad. Fosforos de Suguridad. So that must mean fire sticks or something like that. Oh, they're not very strong. That one just broke just by touching it to the uh, side of the box. Let's try that again. We're going to light this one. And they go out pretty quick. We looked in the house for a nice lighter stick, couldn't find one. Okay, we used a double that time. And that seemed to work a little bit better. So go ahead and stick that right in. So I get it out of the wind. And I hoping all that oh yeah we got smoke already I'm hoping all that uh, sage fell through the sticks to the bottom so it'll light up quickly I can hear popping and cracking so this smoke will be in the beginning until the sticks catch and the cardboard burns out um, in the meantime it's gonna smoke a lot but these fires burn really hot so the theory behind them is that there's gonna be a, uh, a minimal amount of smoke Now, one of the things I learned on YouTube the other day about these, I, you know, I kind of figured the name Funny. of these stoves, um, rocket stoves, comes from the fact that they sound like a rocket when they're well lit. So I'm going to get really close, see if you can hear that humming, that um, roaring can't really hear it anymore. It's starting to subside already. But when these things are going, you can see the flame coming out really, really full right now. When these things get really going, they uh, sound like a rocket ship. <laughs> All right, so the stove's lit. We're going to go up to the house and get our food. We're going to, we're going to uh, cook tonight. Our pot, our pot. We're going to cook it on. And again, we're going to put our two bricks instead of a metal burner pad, which we don't have. We're going to just simply put our two bricks. There it is again. It sounds like a rocket ship. The two bricks are going to go here and here. And the pan is just going to sit right on top of that. Wow, this thing's really going good now. It's even coming out the flue over here. So now the theory is these sticks that are sticking out here in front are going to be um, just pushed in as they burn up. So I can already see they're burning up. 
So now we just push them in a few more inches and now we hopefully keep burning. I kind of put the fire out a little bit. Maybe add some more of this uh, dry tinder to get them caught again. This dry sage. So the sage is also acting as like a smudging, a christening um, for our, our new stove. Yeah, that put it out. So I can see the papers in there still burning. We're gonna push it in a little further and that might re-catch it. Blowing a little extra air in there might re-catch it also. Yeah, it looks like it did. Not a roaring flame anymore, but it's lit again. So it didn't go out completely. It's, um, it's, you know, it's a learning experience here. What makes the snow burn better than other things? So I hope we've got enough height to create our draft. It looks like we do, but if we don't, we can add a couple more layers because we got plenty of bricks. All right, that's it. It's burning. It's just not as shooting flames as it was when we first started. So we're going to go get our pot and our food and put it on there to cook. See you soon.